All right. So we're going to get started. I think um, numbers are still going up um, in terms of number of participants. But given the time that we have now, I think it's important for us to go ahead and just kick it off. Um, so first of all, I um, just want to welcome you um, to the, today's webinar. Um, my name is Fadi Kemi Akim Federin. I lead the global advocacy um, team at FOS Feminista. Um, and uh, FOS Feminista is an international alliance made up of over 250 partners working worldwide. Um, to advance sexual and reproductive health rights and justice. Um, we're really excited to have you all today. This is a webinar that we're initiating to kick off a new consortium made up of amazing partners, many of which you're gonna uh, meet on the call today. Um, it's called the Sang Pusang um, Initiative, and it's a menstrual health and dignity initiative um, supported by the French Development Agency. Um, and this, this initiative, this consortium is actually being led by FOS Feminista, PSI Europe, the Global South Coalition for Dignified Menstruation, and also Equipop. Um, and we're going to go into more details about the initiative in a few minutes. But um, before we do that, I want to, first of all, welcome you all um, to let you know that we have interpretation in three languages, in English, in French and in Spanish. So please, if you can take a look at the globe icon and select the um, select the language of your choice um, so that we can have you all be able to fully participate um, and engage in today's um, webinar. Um, and so just to sort of kick us off, I want to definitely hand over to my wonderful colleague, Tara um, Makulo, who is going to do a bit of the introduction into the project and into the initiative so that you all know what it's about before we go into the substantive elements of today's webinar. So um, webinar, and uh, Tara, over to you. <laughs> Please go ahead. Thank you, Kemi. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be online uh, with you all among uh, the World Consortium. Uh, just one day before uh, the men, the menstrual hygiene, hygiene day. Um, it's very exciting for me, for us, to introduce you uh, to the 100% uh, project, to the 100% consortium. I hope uh, that you will find the today webinar very exciting and that it will lead to very like sparkling uh, future conversation. Um, to go deeper on the project, uh, every day around like 1.8 billion of girls, women, and gender diverse uh, people menstruate, and around like 500 million of them still lack access uh, to resources, to projects, uh, to services, to the necessary uh, information that they need to positively experience um, uh, their menstruation uh, safely in an empowering way and in a dignified uh, way. And this is especially true uh, for people who experience uh, different layers of, in, of in, uh, intersection of discrimination, um, who live, for example, in humanitarian, humanitarian context, who are on the move, and many live in cultures that not allow them um, that not allow them to stay in their cultural and religious spaces while menstruating. And that's like restricting their life, their movement, and their religious practice. So menstrual dis discrimination is definitely a human rights issue. So the 100% uh, project, uh, 100% Uni pour la Diversité um, is a project, is a consortium um, funded by uh, AFD and, and led by um, four organizations. And we are all uh, mobilized to achieve um, many goals. Um, I can I can talk about the first one. So the first the first goal of the of the consortium is um, to support to strengthen feminist movements, feminist organiza organization, so that they so that they can work around abolish 
several cultural norms to ensure that um, people who menstruate uh, can do that in all their diversity, with all their rights uh, respected and in, um, in a dignified uh, approach. Uh, when I mentioned that we that the consortium is here to support and strengthen feminist and um, uh, feminist organization and movements, uh, we do that through uh, feminist uh, grant making, by capacity building, and also by feminist research. Um, we also have uh, a second objective, which is uh, to support social and solidarity enterprises. Uh, to strengthen their capacity to offer uh, very diverse and affordable, accessible project services and educational services. Um, all that goals um, are, are led by the four organization of the, um, of the consortium. In the consortium, you can find um, PSI Europe. Um, you can also uh, find uh, Equipop and the Global South Coalition for Dignified Menstruation and Force Feminista. Each of us has uh, um, its proper role. Equipop will ensure the feminist grant making strategy around uh, three countries in uh, West Africa Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, and uh, Guinea. And they are also in charge of. Um, uh, giving uh, to the feminist organization in those three countries strategic and technical support to advance menstrual health and dignity and um, SRHR. Uh, PSI Europe is the lead of the consortium regarding the technical support to, to, the, to the social enterprises um, working around uh, projects and uh, services and delivering that uh, in, a, in an evidence-based approach to SRHR and menstrual health and dignity. Um, the Global South Coalition uh, is leading the South South learning and knowledge on menstrual health and uh, dignity. And Force Feminista, uh, we led a feminist grant making uh, within a six country uh, in the lat uh, in the Latin America and Caribbean, in Haiti, uh, Dominican Republic, uh, in Asia, uh, with Philippines and Pakistan, and in Africa with Nigeria and, and Cameroon. Yes, so the within the sample within the sample country uh, project, sorry, uh, we are covering like ten countries, as I was saying, around uh, three regions: West and Central Africa, Asia, and the Latin America and uh, and Caribbean. I will now uh, pass. Uh, um, pass on the, the priority targets group that uh, the 100% consortium um, will, uh, will work with. Uh, as I was saying, uh, the project is coming with a, with a dignified approach, with, which means that um, we are targeting like a, 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 diver, a, a diverse group of people, as diverse as the people who menstruate, women and young people in particular, gender diverse people, uh, people living with disabilities and people living on human humanitarian context, fragile context, who are on the move. Thank you so much, uh, Tara, for providing that wonderful introduction to the project. And I know that we're going to come back um, into more details later on when we open up the space for us to talk about opportunities for collaborating with this initiative and with the consortium partners that are on the call today. Um, so just moving us along, and thank you so much for highlighting um, the connection between this initiative and basically um, the Global Menstrual Hygiene Day. As you know, um, tomorrow is actually the day, which also coincides with the day for action on women's health. Um, I think it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to think together and to be able to 
um, be able to strategize together and raise visibility. So um, the World Menstruation Hygiene Day um, is observed every year on May 28th. And the whole point is really to increase visibility about menstrual health, education, hygiene management, and challenge some of the negative perceptions and stigmas as it actually contributes to gender inequality and ensure that all menstruating individuals have access to safe, comfortable um, accommodations and are, are able to live a life free of menstruation-based discrimination. Um, and so, we thought it was going to be a great opportunity for us to contribute um, to the conversations that are happening on this day by sharing, first of all, this webinar and sharing our perspective to um, what we see as a human rights approach to menstrual health. We, we as a consortium politically do not like the term menstrual hygiene. And I know that our colleagues are gonna highlight a little bit more as to why. Um, and we're hoping that you'll join us in the call for changing um, this title of the day um, to something that's more appropriate and more centered on people and less discriminatory. Um, to more of menstrual health than menstrual hygiene. But we'll come back to that conversation later because that's really sort of part of the entire um, focus of today's conversation as well. So I have the singular opportunity um, to be able to present uh, an amazing lineup who's gonna share with us um, their content and their analysis around two broad objectives. The first, we wanted to share with you um, a bit of our reflection on the three core approaches of our initiative of this consortium, the Sang Pusang project. It's one around the concept of menstrual dignity, the second about centering um, the perspective and the lived realities and the leadership of the global South, and also thinking about what does a feminist and intersectional approach look like to this work. The second we're going to be looking at is how are we also um, ensuring and centering the rights, the needs of those that are structurally excluded and marginalized in these conversations? How do we take a more broad intersectional approach versus sort of like the mainstream when we think about menstrual health? And of course, immediately our minds go to the issues of adolescents and girls, but I think what we want to do is to be able to shift the conversation a bit beyond that, and hopefully the panelists will be able to speak to that um, today. So like I mentioned, I have the the the, the opportunity to introduce uh, to us today. I'm going to first of all start off with um, our wonderful colleague from Nepal, Dr. Radha Patel, who is an author, an activist, and lifelong rebel um, for dignified menstruation. She's the founder of the Global Network, the Global South Coalition for Dignified Menstruation, that initiated the International Day for Dignified Menstruation. And she writes about menstrual health, and particularly dignified menstrual health in Nepal and in English, in Nepali and in English. Our second um, panelist today is Henriette Sirak who has gained her experience in menstrual health and dignity by finding an NGO that works to change and challenge social norms around menstruation and its intersection. Um, she is French and based in Paris. She holds a master's in, in, in management, and she's actually the lead for this project with PSI Population Service International Europe. Our third speaker panelist today is, is Janine Foreigner who is a committed feminist who has been working at Equipop since 2018. As part of her work, she mentors the consortia of local um, civil society organization, youth movements and feminist activists in the implementation of advocacy projects to advance sexual and reproductive health and rights, but also ending gender-based sexual violence. And final but not the least is our colleague Yvette Avino, who is a researcher and educator on SRHR, menstrual rights and LGBTQI plus issues and youth with over eight years of uh, activism in the Latin American Caribbean region. They have championed human rights focused on menstrual dignity, migration, comprehensive sexuality education and feminist perspectives in urban and digital spaces. They identify as a non-binary person. So it's really my honor to be able to Pass on the mic um, right now to our colleague that's going to go first, um, who is Henriette, um, representing PSI Europe, to, fight, to first of all, 
bring us into the conversation by talking about the importance of centering the voices and leadership of the Global South towards achieving a dignified menstruation. So over to you, Henriette. Thanks, Next slide. Kenny. Thanks, Kenny. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. It's a really a great joy to be here today and to speak together as a consortium publicly for the first time for Project 100%. My name is Henriette Serac, and I'm the uh, project lead for PSI Europe, as Kemi mentioned. So um, as we have seen, Project 100% is really anchored in the perspectives of the Global South. And I want to explain what we mean by that. First of all, I think it might be useful to clarify for a lot of people on the call what, we, uh, what the project name means. So 100% is actually a play on words in French. We're France funded and we wanted a name that resonates with the French audience. Sans means blood in French. We don't pronounce the G, uh, the J at the G at the end. Uh, and uh, sans sounds the same as sans, C-E-N-T, which means 100 in French. So that makes that uh, our project name is basically blood for blood or 100% united for dignity. So I hope it helps uh, clarify a little bit. Um, second, you'll see us refer a lot to MHD during this presentation, during the duration of the project, and hopefully beyond. Uh, indeed, dignity, um, as Kenny already, already mentioned, is really central to our approach. And our proposal to the sector is to promote dignity, meaning the psychosocial dimension of menstrual health, as part of the agenda of the sector, and why not in its very name. Um, our colleagues at the Global South Coalition for Dignified Menstruation will talk a bit more to this uh, in a minute. Thirdly, Global South. We're using this term for ease, um, as a lot of people do, but we want to recognize that it's imperfect. Uh, it may obscure differences in wealth uh, within countries and within regions, as well as historical relationships and power imbalances within those relationships. Next slide, please. So what's at stake here? Why do we need to be Global South-led? When we don't intentionally put the Global South perspectives at the center, we risk perpetuating a colonialist mindset. In the context of menstrual health and dignity, it has meant focusing on hygiene and considering it a marker of civilization. It has also meant imposing values and in some cases, a lens of morality uh, both of those things have contributed to the stigma and the taboo around menstruation in a lot of countries where we will work. Um, colonialism has also um, meant devaluing indigenous knowledge and practices, um, and, and that's also contributing to um, some of the issues we're seeing in the sector now. So we feel it's important to recognize that we're still deconstructing this heritage and we need to make a conscious effort to move away from those mechanisms and to correct the damage they have done. Still today, North to South initiatives risk being culturally insensitive, they risk creating misunderstanding and all in all reducing the effectiveness of initiatives being less relevant. Next slide, please. On the other hand, the opportunity when we're intentionally South-led is to help shift the dynamic from one of domination and dependency to creating a more equitable partnership. Uh, when we empower local communities with resources and knowledge, when we design more locally relevant solutions, all in all, we're uh, helping build more if, uh, effective, more impactful, and more sustainable initiatives. So being South-led is not just ethically necessary, it will really help build deeper, longer-term impact. Next slide, please. So how will Project 100% do this? Um, as we've already mentioned, dignity being a central principle in our project really reflects the uh, experiences, the menstrual experiences and the consequences um, that um, the communities that we work for um, um, experience when, when the access to menstrual health is lacking. So that's why we're, you know, by having dignity as the central principle, we're really centering the project around experiences from the Global South. 
It's also central, the uh, Global South um, voices are also central to, uh, to the very purpose of our project. In our theory of change, we have three objectives and three out of three of these objectives rely on us strengthening South-based organization. It's really the central mechanism through which we hope to create an impact. Next slide, please. In practice, how will we do that? How will we center the project on Global South perspectives? First of all, everything we do from you know, mapping, designing, strategizing, and of course implementing will be locally driven. Second, we will operate, and that's, you know, that's a pretty uh, innovative um, mechanism, will operate as an intermediate fund. So rather than us, the four consortium members, implementing ourselves, the project, we will be uh, redirecting 50% of the funding directly to local um, uh, civil society organizations and social enterprises. We'll also, in addition to funding, uh, provide them with tailored capacity building so that they can bring the agenda forward, uh, champion menstrual health and dignity autonomously in the long term without needing assistance. Fourth, we will, throughout the project, we'll be continuously promoting South to South learning. We'll be giving learning grants. We will be um, supporting learning visits. And we have two learning countries, Ethiopia and Nepal, as, as Tara explained, so that you know everything we do is documented by learnings and successes from the South. Finally, one of our central mechanisms throughout the duration of the project, what we'll be really building is these ecosystems locally and regionally, so that uh, civil society organizations, activists, feminist organizations, as well as social enterprises can um, animate their own ecosystem and um, progress towards menstrual health and dignity in autonomy. Over to you, Jeanne. From thank you so no 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 thank you so much Henriette for for laying that out and connecting this piece to the overall project in terms of how we're centering the leadership of the south now we're actually going to pass it to Dr. Radha Patel and right. she's now going to unpack for us what do we mean by dignified perspective like we've been saying this word over and over and over again and we really need to kind of get to the heart of it what does that mean so over to you Radha thank you so much namaste uh, good evening from Global South Secretary Office of Global South Coalition for Dignified Menstruation. Thank you very much, uh, Kemi, for a very comprehensive uh, introduction. Actually, it's a great honor to be with you all as a member of the uh, consortium. As a lifelong advocate for dignified menstruation and founder for Global South Coalition for Dignified Menstruation, I really like to share this few lesson learned with you all. The first lesson learned is unpacking menstrual discrimination. Menstrual discrimination is not a single event or act. It is a range of menstrual practices, includes taboos, shyness, stigma, restriction, abuses, violence, deprivation from resources and services. It has been practicing all over the world in different names, forms and magnitude. It, it depends on culture to culture, even it varies within the same family members. It plays vital role for construction and reinforcement of power relationship and patriarchy since childhood. It goes in a spiral way and it created a systemic and symptomatic impact in the life of the menstruators. As you can see the picture in the slide. Next. Menstrual discrimination affect each aspect of or moments of menstruators throughout the life cycle in all diversities, including menopause or ICU in pandemics or climate crisis or everywhere. We don't have an excuse to stop or to, to uh, um, not discussing about the dignified menstruation. So menstrual discrimination is a form of sexual and gender-based violence. Often it is a cause and effect for various forms of sexual and gender-based violence, including child marriage. It is a, an, an underlying barrier for utilizing sexual and reproductive health and rights. It is a violence of human rights. 
it violated many rights at once. And it is not a linear. It is a dynamic, complex, and multifaceted. Next slide, please. The second learning of us is menstrual discrimination is overlooked by key actors, including UN, and misinterpret and mislead the discourse. Let me give the examples. The 76 years course of human rights discourse, the menstrual discrimination is not recognized as a form of violation of the human rights. Likewise, the CEDA 1979 or Beijing Platform for Action 1995 or even STG merely caused the issue of menstrual discrimination. There is no single word about it. And likewise, even define menstrual discrimination under the harmful traditional practices. How? From this forum, on behalf of the consortium member, I like to ask to UN how and why it is it is a, a harmful traditional practice. The Global South Coalition believe it is not at all. And likewise, while explaining the debt on sexual and gender based violence, um, um, UN always said one out of three women experience physical, social, emotional you know, violence at their lifetime. If you see the menstrual discrimination, as it defined, there is no uh, account. That means menstrual discrimination is not accounted as a form of sexual and gender based violence as defined by the UN. And likewise, if you go through the gender inclusion and social, uh, uh, gender equality and social inclusion policies or International Labor Organization Convention 190, they talk about the Equality, they talk about the uh, dignity, but there is no, no space for menstrual discrimination, including menopause. Likewise, as my friends has already highlighted, the global menstrual movement is very much colonized and focused on five days of bleeding or product or infrastructure. Next. In this Given scenario, the dignified menstruation is a very decolonized, innovative, holistic, human right and life cycle approach for creating equal power relationships in childhood, dismantling patriarchy, accelerating the inclusion. While we call menstruators and non menstruators the persons with the disabilities, trans men, queer, non gender binary automatically comes and the, the inclusion process will be faster. And the dignified menstruation is beyond the product or was or infrastructure. And it is a key tool for preventing sexual and gender-based violence, including child marriage. And also it is a, it is a tool for improving sexual and reproductive rights, um, including comprehensive sexual education because menstrual dignity is an entry point for SRHR and CSE. Likewise, the dignified menstruation, of course, is a tool for promoting human rights, and it is a cross-cutting theme because menstruators are everywhere. We cannot imagine any place or levels without the presence of the menstruators, no matter where we are. Thank you. Now I like to hand over to Zenin. Thank you much so much, Radha, and I'm going to introduce uh, Janine in a second. Um, and thank you so much for highlighting what are some of the key elements that we're expecting to see um, in terms of a dignified menstruation, but also how we can use our approach of a dignified menstruation as an entry point for other key SRHR issues, which I think is really important in this moment where we're experiencing pushback around SRHR issues globally. So thank you so much for highlighting that. So I wanna hand over to my colleague Janina from uh, Equipop, who's now gonna be able to highlight for us, what do we mean by utilizing a feminist approach and what role has feminist movements played in this and should be playing in terms of the um, movement and engagement around and elevating um, and visibilizing the issues of menstrual health and dignity. So over to you, Janine. And Janine will be speaking in French, so please make sure that you have on your um, interpretation um, icon. Thank you so much. Over to you, Janine. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Je suis ravie d'être avec vous aujourd'hui. 
Euh, donc, du coup, pour, pour une de nos partenaires ivoiriennes, Amandine Yao, de l'association Goutte Rouge, adopter une approche féministe des menstruations nécessite euh, de se poser différentes questions. Par exemple, comment la société a été faite pour moi en tant que personne menstruée euh, Pourquoi les politiques ne répondent pas à mes besoins Comment on repense collectivement les menstruations pour toutes les personnes menstruées euh, Comment on repense euh, l'idée de l'horloge biologique qui dit qu'on commence à être femme quand on a nos, nos règles pour la première fois et qu'on l'arrête de l'être quand on les a plus Ou d'où viennent les tabous, les stigmatisations, les discriminations, les interdictions vécu par les personnes euh, menstruées. Du coup, pour Equipop, euh, se poser euh, ces questions euh, amène à réfléchir euh, à comment les menstruations sont euh, historiquement et euh, culturellement utilisées comme un instrument euh, de contrôle des corps euh, et euh, de la sexualité des personnes menstruées. Euh, slide, please. Euh, quand, on, quand je parle de, de contrôle des corps, c'est parce que, euh, et comme euh, l'a dit euh, euh, Rada juste avant, en, en représentant les menstruations comme quelque chose de honteux ou de sale, les sociétés imposent des restrictions sur la manière dont les personnes menstruées peuvent se comporter ou interagir. Par exemple, euh, ça peut se manifester par la limitation euh, des personnes euh, menstruées à la participation de certaines activités, euh, à la possibilité d'aller dans certains lieux, le besoin de cacher euh, le fait qu'elle soit euh, menstruée, euh, le, de, le fait de devoir gérer la, la douleur euh, en silence, par exemple, euh, ça apporte euh, voilà, de l'exclusion sociale, la perte d'opportunités et parfois euh, aussi de, de l'exposition à des violences. Et euh, concernant la, le contrôle de la sexualité, pourquoi Parce que ça a des répercussions sur l'éducation sexuelle, le consentement, euh, la liberté sexuelle, la capacité ou non d'avoir des rapports sexuels, euh, etc., donc, euh, tout ça représente des violations des droits humains, des, euh, des SSR, comme le droit à l'autonomie corporelle, le droit à être informé, euh, l'accès euh, à, à le droit à avoir accès à des, des soins de qualité, par exemple. Euh, slide, please. Donc, pour euh, pour Equipop, euh, donc Equipop, pardon, défend une approche transformative euh, pour aborder la santé euh, menstruelle en questionnant euh, et en analysant les rapports de pouvoir pour redéfinir la manière euh, dont les menstruations sont euh, gérées et, euh, dans, et euh, perçues et gérées euh, dans, euh, dans les sociétés. Parce que on va se le dire, bien vivre ces règles, c'est un droit pour toutes les personnes euh, menstruées. Donc du coup, ouvrir le dialogue sur les menstruations, c'est une porte d'entrée euh, pour euh, et pour parler du droit à disposer euh, librement de son corps et demander à avoir accès euh, à ces euh, euh, droits. Sorry, pardon, Jeanine. Uh, interpretation, we've lost interpretation in English, please. Ah. Sorry, apologies. Is the interpretation back, please? Yes, please. Yes, please go ahead. Back to you, Jeanine. Apologies. Okay. Euh, donc du coup, je, je disais que ouvrir le dialogue sur euh, les menstruations, euh, c'est donc euh, la porte d'entrée pour parler du droit à disposer euh, librement de son corps euh, et pour demander un accès complet euh, aux droits euh, et à la santé sexuelle et reproductive en tant que continuum euh, de droit. Euh, les approches féministes euh, de la santé euh, menstruelle permettent de croiser euh, les connaissances scientifiques et expérientielles pour équiper toutes les personnes de connaissances et de compétences euh, tout au long euh, de leur vie. Slide, please. Donc, pour Equipop, euh, adopter une euh, approche par les droits et une approche féministe consiste euh, à mettre en place plusieurs principes d'action euh, le premier, c'est de créer des espaces d'échange et d'éducation positif pour sortir de la honte, des tabous, sortir de l'approche biomédicale et hygiéniste qui est souvent euh, associée à la, à la santé euh, menstruelle et euh, pour permettre euh, aux personnes concernées euh, d'être au centre des discussions. Euh, 
le deuxième point, c'est de demander euh, des moyens et des investissements pour créer de la connaissance sur le sujet, euh, par exemple sur l'impact du non-accès à la dignité menstruelle, l'impact du cycle menstruel sur euh, la psychologie, euh, mais aussi sur les pathologies qui sont euh, associées, l'endométriose, le syndrome des ovaires polykystiques, les fibromes, la gestion de, des douleurs. Euh, un autre point qui est aussi très important, c'est de militer avec les féministes euh, du Sud contre la précarité menstruelle, les injustices liées aux menstruations, etc. Euh, par exemple, Equipop euh, accompagne depuis plusieurs années le festival euh, Menstru Libre euh, en Côte d'Ivoire, qui est un espace euh, rare pour parler euh, librement euh, des menstruations euh, via des cercles de parole, par exemple. Et c'est euh, extrêmement transformateur comme... Euh, comme approche euh, en Côte d'Ivoire. Euh, le quatrième point, c'est euh, de prendre en compte euh, l'approche intersectionnelle lorsqu'on parle des droits euh, et euh, de santé euh, menstruelle, parce qu'il est important de pouvoir reconnaître les expériences individuelles euh, de toutes les personnes menstruées. Euh, on, on, on sait que chaque personne qui a ses règles peut avoir des besoins euh, et euh, des défis uniques en fonction euh, des différentes euh, dimensions de, sa de son identité. Euh, mais euh, Yvette euh, de Fosse Féminista euh, vous en parlera euh, plus en détail euh, juste après ma présentation. Et euh, le dernier point, qui est un point extrêmement important pour Equipop, c'est euh, de faire des règles un, un enjeu politique euh, en questionnant euh, l'inaction des États, le poids des représentations, les histoires coloniales, euh, des premières règles jusqu'à la ménopause et ainsi permettre euh, aux personnes menstruées de bien vivre leurs règles et surtout de créer de nouvelles représentations positives. Slide, please. Et euh, donc, pour conclure, euh, en tant que personne euh, ou euh, organisation, euh, nous devons questionner nos représentations et nos privilèges afin de garantir des solutions pour toutes les personnes menstruées et transformer les sociétés euh, pour qu'enfin les personnes menstruées aient accès à une plus grande autonomie, à l'égalité et à la dignité. Merci beaucoup, Kémy. Je te redonne la parole. No, oh, merci beaucoup, Janine, and that was really great. I uh, really appreciate all the elements. And I think one thing I'm taking away from what you said is that we need to make menstruation political. We need to make periods political. I, Some of you, I don't know if you all saw... I don't know if it was in Kenya or if it was in Uganda, there was a female politician that had stained herself and was in parliament and there was a big uproar about it. Um, and she used that opportunity to be able to make a political statement about menstruation and the fact that menstruation is normal and should not be something that she should, um, she was kicked out of parliament um, because she had stained herself. And I think we, the more and more we bring these conversations to what we call unusual spaces, the more and more that this will now be accepted as the norm. But I also want to mention and highlight the fact that menstruation in terms of our very heteronormative patriarchal view is insufficient. And I'm excited to have my colleague Yvette and they're gonna take us through what does it mean to look at this in terms of a gender diverse lens, in terms of an intersectional lens, in terms of diversity lens, um, and how do we elevate and prioritize the needs of different types of menstruators in this process. So over to you, Yvette. Muchas gracias. Kemi, muchas gracias a todos que me han precedido antes. Creo que han podido enmarcar muy bien lo que queremos decir desde el proyecto de San Forsan en términos de ver eh, la menstruación y la dignidad menstrual desde otros lentes, desde preguntarnos qué significa una aproximación desde el sur, qué significa una aproximación feminista. En esta ocasión tengo la oportunidad de... Uh, un segundo, voy a, uh, me está pidiendo mi idioma, el son, ahí está. Muy bien, uh, perdón. Muy bien, entonces, en esta ocasión tengo la oportunidad de compartir algunas reflexiones cuando hablamos de la intersección entre la menstruación digna y las identidades diversas 
los cuerpos diversos, las experiencias diversas de menstruar. Cuando hablamos de menstruar, muchas veces lo vinculamos directamente con la experiencia del cuerpo o de la feminidad, del cuerpo femenino, de lo que es ser mujeres o ser niñas, ser adolescentes. Sin embargo, esto va excluyendo sistemáticamente las experiencias de las personas no binarias, de las personas trans y de las personas con eh, discapacidades o que experimentan otros contextos o contextos desafiantes al momento de manejar y experimentar su menstruación. En ese, en es, digamos, en esta cuestión, cuando nos preguntamos qué tiene que ver la menstruación o cómo podemos acercarnos, el primer paso es escuchar las necesidades de las diversas corporalidades. Por ejemplo, cuando hablamos de productos de gestión menstrual, cuando hablamos de nombrar los productos de gestión menstrual, no hablamos de productos de higiene o no hablamos de productos para mujeres. Sin embargo, en la mayoría de los países del sur global, estos productos están totalmente etiquetados, distribuidos y marketizados desde la apariencia de la experiencia femenina, de la experiencia de lo que es la, la idea de lo que es ser mujer. Entonces, también la menstruación está intrínsecamente ligado con el rito de paso entre, ser, entre la adolescencia y ser mujer. La que sigue, por favor. La siguiente. The next slide, please. Por eso decimos que ligar esta idea que es enteramente patriarcal, enteramente machista, que está uh, ligado muchísimo a esta idea binaria de lo que es la experiencia de la menstruación, además de eh, ir en contra de las diversidades o no reconocer las diversidades corporales y de género, también perpetúa la sex sexualización de las infantes, en donde una vez se tiene este rito de paso de la menarquía, o se cumple con este rito de paso de la primera menstruación, se entiende el cuerpo como un cuerpo que, biológico que debe cumplir con su rito reproductivo, que es decir, embarazarse, eh, tener hijos, morir. Pero esto está muy ligado con la idea de lo que se define como la feminidad. Sin embargo, no necesariamente, o lo que hemos aprendido a través de estas experiencias del ciclo bar, lo que hemos aprendido a través de diversas discusiones, es que la menstruación no es per se una señal de eh, tener que cumplir con estos digamos, estándares, con estos ritos, con estos espacios en donde el cuerpo biológico es puesto dentro de un recuadro y obligado a cumplir con ciertas normas. Las, eh, the next slide, por favor. Next one. Entonces, cuando hablamos de eh, la menstruación, de la intersexualidad, de las diversidades, en primer lugar hablamos de un amplio espectro de individuos que experimenta en la menstruación. Y desde ahí queremos también hablar de que no solamente nos vamos a centrar en la menarquía y en los primeros años de la menstruación, sino también queremos preguntarnos y aprender la menstruación en los diversos momentos de la vida de una persona. Por ejemplo, cuando es adolescente, cuando se es infancia y se está aprendiendo, cuando estamos educándonos respecto a nuestros cuerpos y sus procesos, pero también cuando estamos en un periodo de adultez. Es decir, cuando estamos atravesando diversos momentos y cómo la menstruación se, se vincula, por ejemplo, con la salud mental, se vincula con el estrés, se vincula con la alimentación, se vincula con nuestro estilo de vida. Y después también cómo llegamos a la menstruación y también hablamos de la menopausia y de los procesos que los diversos cuerpos van experimentando una vez que llegamos una, a una edad adulta, una edad madura. Y también cuáles son los estigmas alrededor de los cuerpos adultos de la vejez cuando enfrentan la menstruación. ¿Qué quiere decir eh, menstruar cuando tenemos más de 50 años o cuando estamos atravesando la menopausia? Y además los productos menstruales y los espacios en donde menstruamos son adecuados para nuestros, nuestras necesidades según cada diferente edad. Pero no solamente eso, también cuando hablamos de diversidad en, en la menstruación, también queremos resaltar la necesidad de reconocer que la menstruación también va a transversalizar cuerpos con discapacidad. ¿Cuántas veces, y, y es una pregunta que la vamos a la audiencia y aquí nos escuchan 
cuántos productos menstruales hemos visto que están, son diseñados para personas con discapacidad visual o con corporalidades distintas, con eh, distintas mo movilidades. Muchas veces estos productos ni siquiera son testados en sus cuerpos, ni siquiera son testados en, eh, digamos, este espectro de diversas eh, necesidades. Y muchas veces ni siquiera son tomadas en cuenta sus necesidades. Por ejemplo, cuando tenemos una discapacidad motriz o no hay una eh, enseñanza adecuada sobre cómo hablar y eh, sobre todo generar conocimientos para estos cuerpos diversos. La siguiente, por favor. Pero también, uh, the next slide, please. Y además, cuando hablamos de individuos que experimentan la menstruación, de personas que experimentan la menstruación en diversas corporalidades, también hablamos de diversos contextos en donde la menstruación es experimentada. Y aquí es algo en donde San Porzán va a tener especial énfasis, que es hablar de los contextos en crisis o los contextos de crisis humanitaria. Hablamos de aquellas personas, aquellos grupos que se encuentran en migración forzada o desplazamiento forzado, que, que se han visto la necesidad de huir de sus casas y en el camino normalmente hay una ausencia que tiene que ver con la ausencia estructural, la ausencia estatal, pero también la ausencia que está englobada en el estigma para proveer y garantizar que estas personas tengan acceso a una salud menstrual, a una higiene menstrual digna, a una educación menstrual digna. Hablamos también de un vacío estructural de en los espacios en crisis, de la crisis del agua, la crisis de accesibilidad del agua, la crisis de accesibilidad de espacios seguros, espacios cerrados, espacios que provean la uh, seguridad para las personas eh, de gestionar su menstruación. Y por ejemplo, en un estudio reciente en América Latina, he descubierto que ni siquiera en las escuelas básicas se ha proveído eh, insumos básicos como el jabón, papel de baño, agua, para que las adolescencias y juventudes tengan acceso a su menstruación y a gestionar su menstruación de forma digna. Entonces, hablamos de un complejo interseccional e intersectorial que no solo abarca educación, que no solo abarca eh, sanitización e higiene, sino también alimentación, protección, agua, etc. Entonces, bueno, quisiera cerrar un poco esta reflexión agradeciendo a todas quienes me han escuchado y la invitación a que nos acompañen en este proyecto para seguir generando aprendizajes y reflexiones respecto a las diversidades de personas que necesitamos. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much, Yvette. I really appreciate you bringing out also some of the um, underlining factors we need to consider when we are talking about a dignified menstruation. We need to talk about other intersecting issues around nutrition, around water, around waste management, et cetera. And that in itself is also a component of what we're talking about when we're talking about di dignified menstruation. And it's really key. And I uh, appreciate all the presenters, uh, Yvette, Rada, Harriet and Janine, as well as Tara, for really sort of laying out all of the things that we've been doing a lot of thinking over the past, I would say over the past year, if I if I remember right, it seems like it's a long time ago, but it's been over the past year, and thinking through what can this initiative be, and what are the things we need to think about from a feminist lens, from a justice lens, and from a human rights lens, as we are putting together this initiative. And so, you know, we wanted to open up the floor um, to, to get um, question and answers. And I'm sorry that the format in which we're using Zoom um, would not allow you to write in chat, but it does, there is a Q&A function. And so we want to open up the floor for you all to ask questions in that Q&A function. And I'm happy to, to, to monitor the chat. My colleague, um, Yvette and, and Shifra and Tara can help to monitor so we can open up um, for a Q&A. And then we actually want to ask for your inputs and we have some questions for you as well. And we're gonna share a minty meter um, to ask you to give us your perspective. What exactly are some key elements or innovation that 
should be addressed if we're talking about a dignified menstruation in your context. We recognize that context is very specific. I mean, context is very important in this conversation. Um, and we wanna understand from your perspective, either from your experience or maybe maybe some thoughts have been crystallized as we, we are having this conversation now, what should we be thinking about as a community, as a global community, um, as, to, to ensure a dignified menstruation? What are some of those elements? So that's one question. Um, the second question that I would like to ask is, you know, what strategies do you think that we should basically, what would you recommend? What strategies would you recommend for us to be able to implement um, a dignified menstruation um, approach or to take a justice lens um, to a dignified approach? So this is the, the, the QR code for the Mentimeter. Please, if you can just take, use your phone, Take a, a screenshot of it um, and uh, you can also click, I think. Can you click? No, you can't click, but you can definitely take the QR code. Oh, it's disappeared. Um, can we bring it back, please, uh, Shifra, for a few more seconds and to give people an opportunity to be able to um, share their thoughts and perspective. And then I would love to see in the chat um, I don't know if anyone is monitoring the chat for us. If there are any questions, please, can we, um, can you help us share? Uh, Tara, please, can you speak up? Yeah, yes. sure, I can. We have a, a first question asking if we have a guide to inclusivity in menstrual health. Okay. Um, it's, uh, thank you so much for- Do you want for... me to share all the questions? Maybe we can like, maybe I can like share a first one of question that we yes. can answer and then another one. Yes, please. Is there another question? Please go ahead. Yes. Yes, there is a second one. How do, how do we work with um, the Sample Cell Consortium as a local CSO? Um, and yes, that's it for the moment. Okay. All right. No, perfect. Thank you so much. So maybe I can, um, I can ask, uh, colleagues, I don't know. We, right now we do not have a specific guide about intersectionality. I think it's an interesting product that we can think about, um, supporting and facilitating. And I don't know, maybe my colleagues, um, any of my colleagues wants to take that on, um, in terms of what we could think about in terms of a guide to support intersectionality as we're looking at menstrual health and then menstrual health and hygiene or menstru dignified menstruation, not hygiene, dignified menstruation. And then I don't know if uh, maybe Tara and, uh, and Janine, if you want to speak about um, for local organizations that said that they want to get involved in terms of getting support from this project, if both of you would like to speak to that, given that you are holding the work on feminist grant making. So over to both of you, please. Jeanne, would you like to, would you like to start? Or maybe I can do it. Uh, yes, I can start if you want. Um, dans le projet 100%, on va euh, accompagner dans les différents euh, pays euh, des structures euh, en, euh, leur, euh, en mettant à disposition euh, des fonds. Euh, donc, du coup, premièrement, il y aura euh, d'abord une cartographie euh, des structures qui seront réalisées dans chacun des pays euh, pour qu'on comprenne euh, l'environnement et euh, les acteurs et les actrices qui travaillent sur les questions de santé et de dignité menstruelle. Et par la suite, il y aura, il y a, il y aura différents fonds qui seront, qui seront disponibles avec différentes manières de pouvoir les, les, les avoir, mais ce sera principalement par des appels à une citation d'intérêt ou directement en lien avec les organisations pour permettre de, de financer des projets sur la dignité menstruelle. Donc ça, ça arrive, euh, mais là on est qu'au lancement euh, du projet. Donc euh, restez euh, à l'écoute, restez, suivez euh, nos organisations sur, euh, sur les réseaux, 
Euh, N'hésitez pas à vous manifester aussi euh, auprès de nous euh, après ce webinaire si vous avez des organisations ou si vous connaissez des organisations qui travaillent euh, dans les neuf pays d'intervention du projet que euh, Tara a cité euh, plus tôt euh, pour qu'on puisse euh, voilà, vous identifier et ensuite euh, rentrer en contact euh, avec vous. Thank you, Jean. Maybe I can uh, also add something. But before that, as um, lingui linguistic justice is also a component of our project, and I saw that there are people from Francophone West Africa who are attending uh, the webinar, I will switch to, to, to French. Euh, en écoutant parler euh, tous les collègues aussi tout à l'heure, j'ai remarqué que je ne m'étais pas présentée, même si Kevin a dit que j'étais euh, une, une de ses collègues, une de ses collègues pardon, hyper rapidement. Euh, je suis Tara Moukekoussilolo, je travaille donc avec Kenny et Yvette euh, chez Fausse Féminista, où je suis en charge en fait, du projet euh, 100% et je suis basée à Dakar euh, euh, au Sénégal. Euh, pour vous apporter aussi une réponse à la question posée par, euh, posée par euh, enfin à laquelle Jeanne a répondu, pardon, euh, du, du côté de, du côté donc de Fausse Fénélita, on va travailler avec des organisations féministes locales dans six, donc dans six, euh, dans six pays, euh, République Dominicaine, Haïti, euh, Cameroun, Nigeria et Philippines et Pakistan. Et l'idée, euh, c'est euh, d'être sûr. Donc, ce qu'on va faire en termes de, 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 de renforcement et de soutien, ça va passer aussi par, de, euh, par, du, par du financement. Pardon. Et donc, euh, ce, ce qu'on aimerait, euh, la manière dont on travaille, bah, c'est avec des approches féministes sur quelque chose de pas du, tout, euh, pas du tout compétitif. Et comme disait Jeanne précédemment, avec voilà, appel à une manifestation d'intérêt, donc... Euh, bah je, 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 la, je la rejoins tout simplement en disant qu'il ne faut pas hésiter à suivre les différentes organisations du consortium sur nos différents réseaux sociaux euh, voilà, pour pouvoir suivre les, euh, les actualités du projet. Thank and you Kimmy. so much, Tara yes. and Janine. Uh, I don't know, also just to mention, maybe Henriette, you also want to mention a little bit about the social enterprise um, and the grants available for social enterprise. Please go ahead, Henriette. Thanks, Kemi. Yes, so one of the specificities of the project, or maybe I should speak French, <laughs> as per Tara's point, uh, une des spécificités du projet est qu'on va um, soutenir non seulement les organisations de la société civile, c'est-à-dire les... Euh, ONG, euh, les organisations caritatives, mais on va aussi euh, proposer pour la première fois dans l'histoire de l'AFD euh, des, euh, des petites bourses pour euh, des entreprises sociales, euh, donc des, des organisations enregistrées comme entreprises, mais qui démontrent en fait que le, la finalité et le, la gouvernance de leur organisation est euh, centrée, centrée sur euh, l'impact social. Euh, et donc, nous offrirons des, des bourses euh, à ces organisations ainsi que de, des formations euh, sur le thème de la santé et de la dignité menstruelle. Euh, et donc, de la même façon que, que les organisation de la société civile pourront euh, postuler, nous aurons aussi un, un process qui permettra aux organisations, aux entreprises sociales euh, de postuler, de réfléchir euh, avec nous à la façon dont on peut les soutenir. Euh, donc, euh, on vous invite aussi à rester à l'écoute, à nous suivre sur les réseaux sociaux. PSI Europe, en particulier, c'est nous qui, euh, qui allons parler des entreprises sociales. Donc, n'hésitez pas à nous suivre et à nous contacter si vous avez des questions. Thank you so much, Henriette, for saying that. And I just want to mention, I know that we focus so heavily on about grants, but to be honest with you, this project is also beyond grants, right? There is also the learning and sharing, South-South uh, learning and sharing component of this. So even if your organization is not part of the priority countries that we're working in, the nine priority countries, it does not necessarily mean that you cannot participate in this initiative. And so we will be having, and Tara is going to speak a little bit more about it, and I'm jumping the gun, but we are going to be having more of these kind of webinars, 
um, thought pieces. We'll be sharing some of the materials that are coming out. But if you are interested in being part of this journey with us, it's a three-year journey in which we'll be sharing some of the learnings that are coming from the initiative. Please, please, please reach out. Please also sign up to become a member of the Global South Coalition for Dignified Menstruation. We um, That is the coalition that we're going to be working through that is going to be about positioning the Global South perspective. We want more members in that coalition. And then if you are part of that, you will then be able to access all the materials, all the information that we're putting out, including the webinars that we will be, we will be um, producing as part of this. And I see that there are some really core recommendations to us in the chat about a guide for intersectionality. Um, there's also been another request about advocacy materials to shift the speeches from and the practice from hygiene management to health and dignity. And yes, that is a core part of our work, is a core part of our theory of change. We are going to produce materials that is going to move us from that. And the, the, the Global South Coalition has already started and has a lot of materials on their website around this. So you can actually tap into that. But we will be producing more and having some very concrete, specific country case studies that highlights how we are moving that conversation. And we're hoping that you will join us around that. Um, uh, I'm starting to see. And then there is also the question about how can we link menstrual health and dignity with the movement on sexual and reproductive health rights and justice. Um, I don't know if you, Radha, you wanna speak to that and, and, and maybe Yvette, if both of you can speak to that piece. So over to you, Radha, and then Yvette. Thank you very much, Kenny. Actually, you highlighted about the resources. We, we also produce the books and training manual around dignified menstruation which is available in Amazon as well. And we also develop the training manual reading materials for neuro, neurodevelopmental disorder adults and skulls. Um, you also can have that uh, in Amazon. In top of that, regarding the um, uh, uh, resources in website, there is a resources in sub menu, and then you can find the resources in French language, Spanish, and English. And if you like to get the um, videos, uh, you can uh, found under the YouTube channel called Dignified Menstruation. And in terms of the linking with the Dignified Menstruation and SRHR, there is a very much uh, close connection. We need to go through the history. Historically, we keep talking about the reproductive justice, SRHR, um, but we never um, uh, discuss about the uh, menstrual dignity or menstrual discrimination in a course of SRHR. So to us, the menstrual dignity is an entry point, is an entrance. If you like to work on around family planning or safe haversan or, or safe motherhood, first you need to discuss about the, uh, the dignified menstruation. That means what are the truth, what are the facts, what are the international laws, uh, stage, and um, what kind of taboos, uh, around menstruation uh, you have in your particular context. That kind of things we need to dismantle first, and then uh, it will be more easier to discuss in, in, um, around SRHR. And uh, you will get the resource materials in our website, and uh, we also have the book. Um, uh, once you become the member of Global South Coalition, definitely we will share, and later on behalf of the consortium, we will develop other materials, contextual materials, and of course, this is for all of us. I think I stop right now here. Thanks so much, Rada. Yvette, over to you. Please. Gracias, Kemi. Muchísimas gracias, Rada, también por compartirnos esto. Creo que justamente tú lo has dicho eh, perfecto. El vínculo entre menstruación digna y uh, salud y justicia sexual y reproductiva y derechos sexuales y reproductivos es intrínseco. Pero mucho, durante mucho tiempo el discurso invisibilizó la menstruación como una parte necesaria e importante y esencial del de movimiento de la salud sexual y reproductiva. ¿Por qué? Porque, como hemos visto, la menstruación ha sido siempre un tabú, ha sido algo que es parte del, como decíamos, lo personal es político, pero muchas veces esto, la menstruación estaba como encerrada en casa, estaba sin, sin generar información, sin generar discusiones, 
porque se pensaba que eso pertenecía únicamente al cuerpo de las mujeres, era algo que ella se manejaba y no era público. Sin embargo, hoy la menstruación tiene un componente esencialmente público y cuando hablamos de que es público, es político, ¿por qué? Porque hablamos no solamente de la autonomía de los cuerpos y de la autonomía de las personas que menstruan para decidir sobre sus cuerpos y su, sobre su gestión y los productos que más les convenga o no utilizar para gestionar su menstruación, pero también sobre el derecho de exigir educación adecuada, ed educación eh, pertinente para sus cuerpos, para sus contextos, y todo lo que está, digamos, alrededor de lo que ya hemos hablado en este webinario. Entonces, eh, me parece que ese vínculo está ahí, ha estado presente históricamente, pero ahora es el reto de poder nombrarlo, de poder visibilizarlo y eh, justamente seguir, digamos, cuestionando ambos discursos. Ahora veo también algunas preguntas en español en el chat y quisiera extender un saludo grande a nuestras colegas de Colombia y Argentina que nos han dejado comentarios por aquí en el chat. Uh, muchísimas gracias también a aquellas quienes han expresado su interés en seguir hablando al tema de la, digni de la dignidad menstrual y cómo se vincula la dignidad menstrual con temas de salud menstrual y psicoemocionales. Entonces, por ahí también nos hablan de la educación de infraestructura y saneamiento con enfoque de género y provisión de insumos. Uh, muchas gracias por compartirnos eso. Por aquí también Guadalupe nos habla de trabajar con comunidades indígenas para reflexionar sobre la dignidad menstrual. Y eso nos parece fundamental y es justamente también parte de nuestra aproximación desde este proyecto de hablar de diversidades o de cuerpos diversos cuando nos acercamos a la menstruación. Entonces, bueno, eh, por ahí cierro mi intervención. De regreso contigo, Kenny. Thank you so much, Yvette, uh, for sharing that. And I know that we are almost pressed. We're pressed for time, actually. We just have two more minutes to go. Um, and I wanted to ask uh, my colleague Shifra if you can share some of the responses that it's coming up on the mentee so we can take a look at it. And just to appreciate everyone that took their time to input some of their thoughts and their reflection and the needs that you want to see um, incorporated into this. Um, uh, I'm seeing things about the importance of education, the importance of ensuring access to products, um, the, the, the pieces around bringing in youth voices and queer led voices into the space, um, the importance of water um, and, and issues of um, intercultural dialogue as part of this. And I'm also seeing another piece here about the importance of, um, it's in Spanish, maybe you can help me, Yvette, with, uh, with the claro. piece on their youth and queer-led. Uh, sí, yeah, uh, yes. aquí nos habla de hablar de la menstruación en espacios de escuelas secundarias con adolescentes y juventudes. También habla de abordar la menstruación como un acto político para reconciliar con el tabú y los estigmas que hay alrededor. Y, por ejemplo, también nos hablan de, en el caso de la, de la, de la migración, hablar de la menstruación no solamente eh, de, de el agua y saneamiento, pero también para hablar de cómo hace falta espacios de diálogo cultural en los, en los, en los movimientos o los flujos de migración. Entonces, bueno, eso, Kemi, te regreso a ti. Thank you so much, uh, Yvette, for that. Thank you so much. So could we look at the second question, um, Shifra, that we have, if it's possible? Oh, we had no responses from, from, from partners, but please, please feel free to add um, some of your ideas and your thoughts, but you can also feel free to share them with us by email. I know my colleague is gonna beam our emails. Oh, it's not live yet. So please, it's live now, if you can, actually um, put in some of your thoughts around key strategies you want us to consider to be able to have a rights-based intersectional and just or justice approach um, or, or, or centering justice as we're working on menstrual health and dignity. And while you are putting that in, in the mentee, I want to pass over to Tara 
um, to talk about how can you collaborate with us? What is what is coming up? As you know, tomorrow is the global day um, for visibility around menstrual health and, 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 and dignity. And we want you to join us in terms of sharing your own messages, but we also want to talk about other ways that you can collaborate. I don't know if you'd like to go ahead, uh, Tara, and to talk about the campaign. Merci, Kemi. Alors oui, effectivement, demain, donc c'est le 28 mai, on sera le 28 mai, euh, ce sera la journée euh, de l'hygiène menstruelle. Et comme en fait, on le disait en tout début de, de webinaire, euh, nous, ce qu'on a envie, c'est de vous inviter en fait à, à nous rejoindre dans ce, en fait, dans ce changement euh, de... Ouais, de, dans ce changement d'approche, de paradigme, de sortir de cette approche hygiéniste justement pour aller sur quelque chose euh, de basé euh, sur les droits, euh, approche par la dignité. Et c'est ce qu'on va, enfin, ouais, ce qu va faire euh, dès demain avec, euh, une, une campagne, en fait, euh, euh, avec une campagne sur, euh, euh, sur, les, réseaux, sur les réseaux sociaux. Euh, L'idée de cette campagne, euh, c'est de de partager, de proposer euh, différents récits euh, de personnes euh, qui menstruent et qui vivent euh, donc euh, dans les Suds. Et vraiment, l'idée, c'est de représenter en fait la diversité des expériences autour, des, autour de ces menstruations. Et la manière dont on l'a fait, c'est que euh, toutes les personnes qui ont participé ont répondu à une question qui était euh, pour vous, en fait, euh, euh, qu qu'est-ce qu que ça voudrait dire un, un monde, euh, un monde euh, respectueux, en fait, des, bah, des, personnes, qui, des personnes qui menstruent euh, euh, What a period-friendly world uh, means to you Donc, euh, toutes les personnes qu'on a interrogées ont répondu euh, à cette question. Et donc, ça donne lieu à des, à des, cours, à des cours portraits qui seront partagés sur nos réseaux sociaux. Et, euh, et l'idée, en fait, c'est que pour amplifier en fait, cette campagne et rendre euh, euh, virale et audible euh, les aspirations en fait, de ces personnes qui menstruent depuis les Sud, eh ben, plus, on est, plus on est nombreux et nombreuses à le partager, euh, plus, 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 ça, plus, les voix seront, euh, plus les voix seront partagées. Donc, euh, n'hésitez pas à vous manifester euh, si vous souhaitez que je puisse partager avec vous euh, le toolkit pour pouvoir euh, vous aussi euh, participer à la campagne avec le hashtag et tous les visuels, euh, et tous les visuels nécessaires. Euh, il y aura aussi un quiz euh, sur euh, les réseaux sociaux de Fausse Féminista. Et l'idée de ce quiz, c'est vraiment de... Ouais, de, dé de, 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 de déconstruire toutes les idées reçues, toutes les fausses idées, toutes les, hein, toutes les, ouais, toutes les, toutes les idées reçues, toutes les fausses idées euh, autour des règles. Ça, et euh, ça va des, des choses euh, les plus banales, comme euh, on ne peut, euh, peut pas faire du sport quand on tourne à ses règles, à des choses... Euh, à des choses plus peut-être un peu plus dramatiques en, en termes d'impact et de et de conception. Donc euh, moi ce que je, je vous donne rendez-vous demain euh, dès demain euh, sur les différents réseaux sociaux des différentes organisations membres euh, du consortium sans projet euh, 100% pardon équipe euh, FOS euh, The Global South Coalition et PSI euh, et PSI Europe et je sais aussi que certains des certains des euh, des témoignages euh, auxquels vous, fin, qui, qui font partie de la campagne sont, sont très émouvants. En tout cas, nous, en les lisant, ça, on a été beaucoup touchés et on espère que, on espère que ce, sera aussi, euh, ce sera aussi le cas euh, pour vous. Donc, euh, ouais, rejoignez-nous et n'hésitez pas, à, à, oui, pas à, à vous manifester par email aux deux adresses là, que vous voyez euh, à l'écran. Il y a la mienne et celle, et celle d'Yvette. Thank you so much, Tara, and I'm happy to be able to round us up. Um, and just to encourage you, we will share to everybody that did participate in today's webinar, the campaign materials in case you want to reshare on your personal social media um, platforms and handles, please feel free to do that. You can also follow all our organizations um, on, on different social media platforms and retweet as well. Um, you can also create your own, <laughs> definitely create your own. What do you want to see in a world that upholds or in a, in a, in a society that upholds a dignified menstruation? I, I, I actually challenge the word 
period friendly. It's not a favor. It's that we want the world to be responsive to the needs of those of menstruators and to be able to ensure that there is no form of menstrual discrimination that is um, being upheld in any context, be it in the home, be it in the private space, be it in the public space, et cetera. So please join us um, in that campaign. And also, as I mentioned um, earlier, grants are not the only way you can engage. We do wanna build a community that has a very um, deep in South perspective on this and brings that out. And you all have given us a lot of interesting suggestions on how to, um, on, on thought pieces, on, um, uh, on materials, advocacy materials we can provide that could be of benefit to the global community um, to be able to center these issues. And they are things that we're gonna take on board as we are working through this consortium and the materials and we'll share. So please sign up. Um, to be a member of the Global South Coalition, but also you have emails and you have our contacts, please feel free to send us emails. Um, if there is anything that's also innovative or interesting that you're doing in your context that we should know about, it could be also an opportunity for us to support South-South learning. Um, the learning doesn't have to only be across the nine countries where we're working. We're looking for other countries that are doing uh, innovative ideas. Um, and if you'd be interested in hosting partners from other countries, please let us know. We would love to facilitate those kind of conversations that really puts, as you know, Henriette had said in the beginning, the, 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 the global majority um, at the heart of, of this work that we're doing. So I wanna take the opportunity to thank all the speakers, the panelists today, talk, and thank my colleagues um, for preparing and facilitating um, and making sure that we were able to have this webinar as a wonderful way to kickstart um, the commemoration of the um, Global Day for Menstrual for dignified menstruation, <laughs> as I would say, I rather is very happy to see me change my change my 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 thoughts and and the, my approach to this. Um, and we just want to appreciate you and to just tell you that this is just the start of series of conversations that we're going to be having together, and we're really inviting you to be part of that conversation. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or good evening, um, depending on where you are um, globally. And the last thing I will say, actually, I forgot to say that, as you can see from this webinar, um, language justice is a really key element to the way we are going to be working. And so you will see, just as we've delivered this webinar in three different languages, we are also committed to making sure the materials that we're producing through this project and through this initiative also reflects that um, approach and that priority. So you will be able to access materials in multiple languages. We're going to try, our, at least we're committing to the three languages of English, Spanish, and French. We are going to try our best to be able to expand to other languages as much as we can, but we're committing to these three um, as a start. So if you are interested in getting materials, please don't feel free, don't feel discouraged that it will be in English. It will be in other languages um, to be able to ensure um, greater access and to, to, to uphold our principles of um, inclusivity. So with that being said, I want to say thank you everyone once again, and really looking forward to your engagement with the campaign as we move forward, but also your engagement with our consortium and the Sang Pusang project as we move forward. Have a lovely day and thank you so much. Adios. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Gracias. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you to our interpreters as well Gracias. for a wonderful job. Bye -bye. Uh, our colleague Shifra for the behind the scenes with the presentation. Have a lovely day, everybody.